Once again residing in the Red Keep, Cersei is alerted to Jaime's return and runs excitedly to the port to meet Marcella for the first time in the space of almost four years, but her worst fears are realized when she sees a despondent Jaime standing alone on the boat, with a corpse behind him she immediately realizes is Marcella's. Later, Cersei is comforted by Jaime in her quarters. Cersei finally admits to Jaime that she believes their children's deaths truly are destined according to Maggie's prophecy, since both Joffrey and Marcella are gone and the only one left is Tommen. Jaime scoffs it off and promises Cersei revenge for all that their enemies have taken from them. A man in King's Landing brags about revealing himself to Cersei during her walk of shame. When the man leaves the crowd to urinate, the gigantic Kingsguard knight walks up behind him and brutally kills him by smashing his head against the wall before reporting back to Cersei. When Cersei attempts to leave for Marcella's funeral with the Kingsguard knight in tow, a squad of guards blocks her path. Their leader informs her that by order of the king, she is prohibited from leaving the castle, in the interest of her own protection. Cersei demands that they move, but the guards do not budge, even when Cersei's Kingsguard places a hand on his sword. Eventually, Cersei acquiesces and retreats to her chambers. Tommen later visits his mother to apologize for doing nothing when she was arrested and forced to walk through the streets naked, then asks her to teach him to rule. Moved, Cersei tearfully embraces her son. Cersei and Jaime later visit Kyburn in his lab, where he has swayed some of Varys's little birds into his service, to Cersei's amusement. When Jaime asks Kyburn to order Gregor Clegane to slaughter the High Sparrow and the Faith Militant, Cersei claims it will not be necessary, since she has opted for a trial by combat and again named Gregor as her champion. She then orders Kyburn to place his spies all over Westeros to prevent any other great houses from benefiting from the Lannisters' disgrace. Cersei, Jaime and Gregor attend a small council meeting, but Kevin, Pycelle, Olena and Mace Tyrell refuse to accept them, with Olena coldly reminding Cersei that she is no longer queen. When they defy the council and sit down, Kevin leads the council out, leaving Cersei alone with Jaime and Gregor. A few days later, Cersei goes to speak to Tommen, only to find he is already being counseled by Pycelle. Despite the Grand Maester's claim that he is simply offering his wisdom to the king, Cersei coldly orders him to leave. Once alone, Cersei wishes to speak with Tommen in private, having missed the past several small council meetings. Tommen is anxious to fight the High Sparrow, since Marjorie is still a prisoner though Cersei reminds him of what the Sparrow forced her to do. Although Tommen knows his mother has always hated Marjorie, Cersei claims the rivalry is unimportant, explaining that kings and queens must command respect, and the High Sparrow is little more than an idealistic anarchist using the faith to achieve his goals. After Tommen reveals his conversation with the High Sparrow and knowledge of something important, Cersei presses him for information. Cersei and Jaime attend another small council meeting, this time presided over by Kevin and Olena. Though Olena reminds Cersei she is not welcome, adding her repeated humiliations, Jaime defends his sister, revealing that Tommen has been talking to the High Sparrow about Marjorie and Loras. Cersei points out the High Sparrow was expecting them to fight among each other, and before the trial, Marjorie will perform her own walk of atonement, which Olena agrees must not happen. Although Cersei promises to destroy the Sparrows for corrupting Lancel, Kevin warns them the High Sparrow has many supporters, and more lives could be lost in the ensuing battle. After his failure at the Sept of Baelor and forced removal from the Kingsguard, Jaime informs Cersei he is being sent to Riverrun to help the Freys deal with Brynden Tully. Despite her brother's protests and anger over Tommen's decision to join the High Sparrow, Cersei advises him to lead the Lannister army as their father intended, confident that the Mountain will win her trial by combat. She kisses Jaime goodbye reminding him they are the only ones who matter. Cersei visits Olena Tyrell in an attempt to convince her to stay in King's Landing. She uses Marjorie and Loras as an excuse for Olena to stay, but Olena angrily reminds Cersei that all this is happening because of Cersei herself. Olena reminds her of the smug look she gave her when Loras and Marjorie were being dragged away by the Faith Militant. She tells Cersei that the universally hated Queen Mother has no support in King's Landing, and has lost. Kyburn enters Cersei's chamber to inform her that the Faith Militant have entered the Red Keep. Accompanied by Kyburn and the Mountain, Cersei confronts the group. Lancel tells her that the High Sparrow wishes to speak with her at the Sept of Baelor. When she refuses, Lancel tells her that it is not a request. Cersei retorts that the High Sparrow promised that she could stay in the Red Keep until her trial, 
which Lancel replies that no such promise was made. When Sir Gregor Clegane threatens the faith militant, Lancel tells Cersei to order him aside or there would be violence. Cersei says that she chooses violence. One of the faith militant attacks the Kingsguard, leaving several visible holes in his armor but drawing no blood. In response, the mountain rips the man's head off and tosses it aside and Lancel and his men back down. Later, Cersei, Kyburn and Sir Gregor enter the Great Hall to find a large crowd gathered for a royal announcement. The ladies in court look at the Queen Mother in detest. Cersei asks Kevin Lannister why she was not informed. Kevin bars her from standing beside her son and tells her that her place was in the gallery, with the other ladies of the court. Cersei reluctantly takes her place there while the other women stand aside, not wanting to be near her or Gregor. King Tommen Baratheon starts by saying that the crown and the faith are the two pillars that hold up this world, and should one collapse, so does the other. He also says that the father judges them all, and if they break his laws, they shall be punished. He announces that Loris Tyrell and Cersei's trial will be held in the Sept of Baelor on the first day of the Festival of the Mother. After much prayer and reflection, he also announces that trial by combat will be forbidden in the Seven Kingdoms, stating that it is a scheme made by those who wants to escape true judgment from the gods, and that Loris and Cersei would stand trial before Seven Septons as it was in the earlier days of the faith. As the king leaves, Kyburn tells a shocked Cersei, who had been planning on calling a trial by combat with Gregor as her champion, that his little birds have been investigating an old rumor that she had told him about, and that it appears to be much more than a rumor. On the day of her trial, Cersei dresses incredibly ornately. She is adorned with fine clothes and all manners of jewelry. However, she does not show up at the Great Sept for her trial, instead viewing the city in the distance from the Red Keep. Unknown to those present at the trial, there is a large cache of wildfire underneath the Sept, placed there by Ares II at the height of his insanity. Cersei has Kyburn's little birds light candles with eventually shrink to a size in which the cache can be ignited. Shortly before, Cersei has Kyburn and his little birds assassinate Pycelle, so as to consolidate all power to her. The explosion kills Marjorie, Mace, and Loras Tyrell, Kevin Lannister, all of the sparrows including Lancel and the High Sparrow, and a number of King's Landing citizens. Cersei watches amused and then goes on to confess her sins, including her incestuous relationship with her brother, the murder of her husband and the explosion of the Great Sept, to captured Scepter Anella. Later she gives her as prisoner to the mountain, so she can be tortured, calling, shame, continuously upon her departure. She also states that Anella is not going to die for some time. Following the destruction of the Sept, Tommen commits suicide by jumping out a window. Cersei orders that his body be burned and the ashes buried at the ruins of the Sept, along with the ashes of her father, elder son and daughter. Through right of conquest, she has Kyburn crown her Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. During the coronation, she sees Jaime from afar, who gives her a grim look, 